While we often report great advances in the treatment of cancer and heart disease, the same can't always be said for the tragic affliction of spinal cord injury. Until now. Tonight, you're going to see something incredible. A paralysed man walking. They're faltering steps, but they signal a giant leap forward for science. It's all part of a global effort involving the most brilliant of doctors and the most courageous of patients. We're on the shores of Lake Geneva, not for the spectacular views, but for the amazing sight of a paralysed man getting up out of his wheelchair to walk. It's not that it's done well, but that it's done at all that is truly remarkable. So as you see now, the stimulation is kicking in, the muscles are twitching. I have to remind myself that this shouldn't be happening. <laughs> It's extraordinary. OK. The small steps are huge ones for David Mazie, who was told he would never walk again. But he's proven everyone wrong. In a world first, David is hooked to an iPad, which is sending signals to an electrode implanted in his spine. And his legs have regained movement. You know, watching this, I'm reminded of uh, Neil Armstrong on the moon. A small step for a man, a giant leap for mankind. Yes, I agree with that. Avec cette première mondiale, yeah. Secret yeah. David is something of a celebrity in Switzerland, where his progress is a matter of great interest. I could see how you progress. <laughs> yes. And I hope really that maybe one day we can run together. That would be great. Yeah, thanks be a great. lot. Thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> have, a, have a nice time. And, and that's because the technology is revolutionary. It's called epidural stimulation, and this laboratory in Lausanne is one of a select few around the world trialing it with incredible results. We show that what was once thought impossible might be possible. Grégoire Courtine is the man helping quadriplegics and paraplegics to walk again. I think I've just seen a paralysed man walk. Am I right? Is that what I saw? I mean, I've been working for the past 15 years to see this happen, but the first time that, you know, from the paralysed right to the first steps of someone like David, that's been a great uh, reward for me as a scientist. In 2010, David Mazie was studying to be a physical education teacher. A bit of an adrenaline junkie who loved extreme sports, he came to grief one day in the gym when he failed to complete a simple somersault. It felt like something hitting on my head, and at the first moment I was like, oh, please not another concussion. Then when I tried to move my arms, they didn't move. I tried to move my legs, they didn't move. I, I had difficulties breathing and I, 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 I panicked. Uh, I really panicked. When did you know the worst? Well, the doctors wouldn't tell you straight away. They were like, well, um, mm. you, you got an injury on your spinal cord. So after seven months of rehab, they, they were like, OK, better get used to the wheelchair. Which is telling you you're never going to walk again. Yes, basically, yes. When David became a paraplegic, he began desperately trying to research everything there was to know about spinal cord injuries and treatments. He found, unlike cancers and heart disease, there had been no significant breakthroughs for decades. Setting up the, the treadmill at your yeah, home. Yeah, especially the treadmill. Yeah. That was until he came across the work of Professor Grégoire Courtine. What I've come to be reminded in this hospital is how one random act, one accident, and the people I've been speaking to changes life utterly in an instant. Absolutely. This is why I invested personally in uh, this uh, research. You know, I started, I was 27 years old, working with young male my age who were paralyzed in a wheelchair. And that's what touched me, and I wanted to develop a therapy to help them have a better life. Grégoire Courtine has long been fascinated with the idea that you can repair the nervous system after a spinal cord break, even more so with electrical assistance. 
In the beginning, scientists implanted electrodes on the spines of injured rats to see if they could move again. And when that showed promise, the work progressed to humans like David Mazee. It seems radical, but it's proof that even after trauma, the spinal cord can communicate with the brain and the nerves that help us walk can regrow and recover. Then comes all the intensive involvement of the patient, training every day very hard in order to regain control. And regain control means having new nerve connection growing. You know, it's not a magic pill that you take and overnight you wake up and then you, know, you can walk. With. The key here is that we help the brain help itself. Is it mainly for young people? I mean, would there be hope for an old bloke like me? I don't see restriction for age. Currently, the restriction for the next clinical trials is from 18 to 70 years old. In the medical trial, David had the electrodes implanted on his spine, and within weeks, there was a sign of recovery. Just the smallest sensation of movement, but it was a huge deal. And when I woke up that night, it was like, wow, am I dreaming or what's going on? And so I waited a few minutes and I tried to move my toe again. I was like, wow, this is, this is something that feels real. I, 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 stay, I stayed awake for, I think, one hour or even longer, just moving my toe. Moving your like, toe, yeah. Wow, it's still moving. And I waited a few minutes and it's still moving. It's like, I'm even moving it now that I'm talking about it. It's like... I'm moving yeah. mine too. <laughs> it's like, a, yeah, that was a fantastic feeling. David has finished the medical trial, but continues to train every day in the gym. His improvement is extraordinary. For someone who was told he'd have to get used to the wheelchair, he can now take a few steps unaided. Oh, bravo. That was a long run. That was without stimulation? Without stimulation, yes. You must feel really good about that. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> we have not yet even seen the start of what's possible, in my opinion. We can actually develop sensor technology that's going to be used with our other technology. Australian medical researcher Professor Bryce Vissel is in close contact with global research in spinal injury and has high hopes for the future. A person with a spinal cord injury has always told, you will never walk again. It's hoping they've got to learn to live with that spinal cord injury. But like the Wright brothers, the first time the plane, it only flew a few metres. But once it flew a few metres, that was the beginning of the prediction that we would have A380s flying to LA and back on a single fuel tank. It's an exciting time for patients, but it's also an exciting time for people like you, isn't it? We're going to look back on this like the Industrial Revolution science. We are in the phase of curing illnesses, curing injuries, curing brain diseases that have been thought irrecoverable. We're able to record his brain waves, we're able to record his movement exactly... Professor Vissel has now convinced the University of Technology Sydney to invest millions to bring Australia to the forefront of spinal injury research. Our goal is no less than cure. Um, no less than a cure. We will find the best people in the world who are advancing the technology and science to the maximum capacity that they can try and bring them in here to Australia. So you're bringing here to Sydney the best of what we've been seeing around the world. That is exactly the idea. Making so this the world centre of excellence. Right. I want this to be the world leading program. In order to achieve nothing less than a cure. That's exactly right. That might be great news for the Peterson family. A year ago, Dr Steve Peterson was riding his bike to the emergency department at the Orange Hospital in country New South Wales where he worked. A car crashed into him and he ended up a quadriplegic patient on life support. Were you sicker than anyone you'd ever dealt with? Um, Were you your own sir? worst case? Yeah, no, it would have been, would have been up there. Um, we, we get very sick people in Orange emergency, but yeah, I certainly would have been one of the worst ones that week, I would imagine. Hello, Timmy. Kids probably handle it better than adults, actually. Right. <laughs> They've got a simple view of life. Kids, and yes. sometimes condense it down to the most important things. Dad's still alive, that's actually the most important thing.
Well, your life has changed that all, yeah. It has, so, yeah. but for them, it's like, well, yes, Dad's different, but it's still Dad. Nice language. Steve's wife, nice Debbie, and their two sons hope for the best, but are learning to cope with the worst. You would be aware of this as a doctor, and I suppose as journalists we should be aware of it too, is you don't want to hold out false hope to people. No, and, and I think that's for myself. Um, as much of a life as I've got left, and it will probably still be several decades, uh, I'd like to have as good and a useful one as possible, spinal injury or not. So it is true I need to make sure I, you know, keep, keep going to work, keep uh, doing things with my family, and not sort of holding out for that, that cure um, or improvement. But I'm still interested in whatever comes. We can share it. Medical research costs money, so nothing can happen without funding. Professor Vissel needs 10 to $20 million to bring epidural stimulation to all Australians with spinal cord injuries. It's not really much money, considering the cost to the taxpayer of just looking after these patients is $500 million a year. If I'm at night, late at night, awake, worrying about this program in some respect, I just think to myself, a spinal cord injury patient is laying in bed and cannot actually move. They can't take the sheets off them. They can't shoo away a fly. They, they'll be laying awake. They can't turn over. They can't toss and turn. How could I be concerned about the little worry I have? I have a responsibility since I have the capacity to deliver something like this. While David Mazzee isn't quite the bionic man, he believes these revolutionary little steps really do represent the future for him and the millions like him around the world. When I was your age, this was science fiction. Yeah. We all wish that, uh, that one day you'll be your old self again. Is that too much to wish for, though? No, I think you, you get a dream big and you really got to try to do the impossible to make the possible possible. And yeah, so let's reach for the stars and see where it goes. Hello, I'm Charles Woolley. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.